Why do we need truth? Why is it so important? It turns out that the ability to recognize the truth is a very important and meaningful tool. Information does not come into human consciousness at the moment of birth. We gain information over time. It's not a big secret or mystery. You already know that very well. But let's look at this process from a slightly different perspective, a very important one. How important is truth in forming a picture of reality? Somehow we accept on faith what seems right, reliable, and logical. What we perceive as right, reliable, and logical is usually something that corresponds to our underlying expectations on the one hand, and our deeply held beliefs on the other. And all of this, taken together, somehow affects the way we see the world, so the information that we receive seems to be more true than anything else if it corresponds to information that is already present in our mental body. We perceive reality by comparing it to the map that we have in our mental body. And it is from reality that we receive the information that describes it, we find the correspondence in the mental body and thus evaluate this reality according to our own map of it. But this information may be partial and incomplete. It may have no connection to general processes and events. It may have no beginning and no end, it may be cut off somewhere in the middle like a video clip. This clip is already present in our mental body, but at the same time it is attached to some other piece of information, and we automatically add a beginning and an end to this clip based on other pieces that we also find in our own mental body. And that clip becomes true to us even though it's not. It doesn't reflect reality. It's just a piece, a reflection in a shard of a mirror. But through it we complete our picture of reality. Recent events have offered you an experiment. Recent events have said, look, what is happening now is a real cataclysm, and you definitely have no information about it in your mental body. You may have read about it, but you have never experienced it. You don't have that kind of information. But we give you options, lots of options, and you can choose one of them and have provided you with all sorts of scenarios to explain the events that are taking place. Each person has chosen their own map, the one that corresponds to the map that is present in their mental body. And once he has chosen it, he stops looking for another map. He no longer tries to get another version and see the differences between them. Each map is a piece of the whole entire clip. A person forms an explanation of reality according to what he believes to be true. You've chosen some truth, too. Is it the absolute truth? Or is it the same clip you've completed in your head for lack of anything better? You can learn to recognize when an explanation, when information about reality has a beginning and an end, and when it is partial and has nothing to do with reality. The information may seem logical, but it isn't. How can you determine this? Who can tell you whether it's true or not? You are the only one who can do this. Only an inner, intuitive feeling will help you realize that this information explaining what's happening is false from the first to the last word. Although it may seem very logical, and it can be said by a smart man with glasses who is so important with his degrees and honorary titles. But he talks and you realize, you feel in your gut that he's lying, that he's not telling the truth. Whereas the other explanation seems somehow unproven, but your inner feeling says it is true. And in that sense you begin to create a reality around you based on the truth that you believe to be real.
So let that truth be the real truth and not just what it appears to be. And the right tool is very important here, the set of all truths taken together is called ultimate truth. But everyone has their own truth. As soon as we start substituting our own personal truth, which absolutely corresponds to the I am and is its reflection, its representation, with someone else's other truth, the I am does not accept it, and what is called rejection arises. The consciousness rejects it as a foreign body, as a foreign element and says, no, it is better to have no truth at all than to have this truth. At that moment the I am becomes silent and the consciousness begins to live separately from the I am. This is such a program that is not attached to anything at all, it is absolutely a service program, and such consciousnesses are usually called service programs, they live according to any truth. They live by the truth that is given to them, they take the truth that they have found. And unfortunately, these are not isolated cases. Look around you. Egregores live on and feed off all proto-foundations like parasites. A whole bunch of parasitic creatures cling to the proto-foundation tradition and hang on to it like mistletoe. It's not a provocation, it's more of a test. You can't confuse your personal truth with anything, and if you take someone else's truth, it won't make much difference to the I am, it will continue to sleep. And what difference does it make if the truth is good or bad? If it's someone else's truth, it's certainly not necessary for you. That's why it's important to be able to distinguish your truth from someone else's. A person takes information that seems very logical and puts it into his mental body. There he finds similar information and adds a beginning and an end based on that. But by putting someone else's truth into his mental body, he puts in plugs, so to speak, he forms a new picture of reality and lives according to a new worldview. Bits and pieces of the truth make up a whole ocean of unacceptable lies. And it looks like all of the elements are acceptable, but they're all just clips. And out of these clips, something is being created that never was, and never should have been. If a person does not accept this lie, it will have no effect on his life. But if he accepts it, it becomes a space for living, an environment for his existence. But the worst thing is that it happens with the consciousness of those who are dependent on people who shapes his consciousness in this way. Children, perhaps elderly parents, subordinates, and simply people who, by virtue of the social game, are in a dependent position on someone who has formed his mind out of clips that are not attached to anything. Clip thinking is a product of our current reality. We can probably say it's sabotage. That word has been used a lot in our country. So we can say that it's a kind of sabotage, it's just intentional harm. But if we look at it from a broader perspective, we will see that this phenomenon is more of a provocation. A provocation that tests everyone to see who is worthy of free will and mind and who is not. Of course, clip thinking is mainly the result of upbringing and education. The possibility of forming a non-clip thinking is almost nowhere to be found. Because the classical social education that you and your children are receiving and may have received is based on a system of tests that are the same clips. 
Choose one of the four answer choices, and that's all the knowledge you need. In fact, test thinking is analogous to clip thinking, where you don't have to logically confirm the beginning and the end. You just have to choose the right option. You have chosen an option and ritually you are ready to put this little clip, this little piece into your consciousness by finding a beginning and an end for it, so you are basically doing everything yourself, just by giving your approval. Such simplification leads to clip thinking. Clip thinking leads to the fact that there is no truth. There are images of truth, there are probabilities of truth, there are provocations of lies, but there is no truth. But, as it turns out, the truth is a grand prize in a big game. Truth is something that people didn't value. Something that they easily traded for lies, because lies are more profitable or more convenient. And so there is a lack of truth, and what is lacking must be fought for, Truth requires different algorithms not only to get it, but to keep it. That's why the last few years, and especially the beginning of the 21st century, have been about making us feel the lack of truth and proving that we have a right to truth. All the information that we are getting now from all sides about air quality, about environmental problems, about the fact that carbon dioxide has increased, this information is not coming from the people but from the system, which indicates that CO2 has increased, that there are a lot of lies. And it's not so much about air pollution, it's about the fact that there are too many lies around. But people aren't going to hear it because they're being lied to too much and they're facing the problem of fake news all the time, and if they still don't understand, maybe when their lives are in danger they will realize how many lies there are in this world. Maybe the system needs to do something so that people have nothing to breathe. Maybe the system needs to tell people and show them how that can happen. So now you are working to eliminate the need to accept someone else's truth and incorporate it into your worldview, and as a result you eliminate the need to live by the rules that follow that false worldview. Because the worldview creates the way of living and the way of behaving. When your essential truth awakens within you, the initial truth that originally had a beginning and an end, and a logical connection between the present timeline and that of the distant future, then reality will automatically begin to unfold around you in a completely different way, because there would be no need, or even algorithms to shape a reality that does not correspond to the truth. Reality will unfold like a flower around the grain of truth, and remain aligned with it. If this grain of yours is true and whole, then reality will also unfold as true and whole. If there is a false grain, a piece of clip, that has no attachment to anything, then the same clip reality will be formed around you.